94.5 Cool FM and S. Ray Charles as we take a couple of minutes out every afternoon around this time to say thank you to those that have served our country, those that have uh, served in the past, those serving right now, and as I always like to say, especially those in harm's way, we keep you in our thoughts and prayers. Please come home safely. And as we uh, say thank you for serving, I have a very special man I'd like to personally say thank you for your service to our country. Adrian Cronauer is here with us. He's the guy that Rob Williams played in Good Morning Vietnam. Adrian, thanks for stopping by. Jack, thank you so much for letting me talk to your listeners uh, because I have an important message, but it's also always good to get back into the saddle and back into a studio and uh, bring back some of my old memories of when I was sitting uh, where you're sitting right now. Well, now tell us, why are you in town? There's a very, uh, very important meeting coming up on uh, Saturday. You want to tell us about the meeting? That's what you're here for, right? Well, Jack, I... uh, have been working for the past six years with the Prisoner of War and Missing in Action Office at the Pentagon. Some of the most rewarding work I've ever done in my life. And one of the things we do that uh, is probably the most rewarding part of my job is what we call family updates. Now once a year, uh, or pardon me, once a month, we will pick a major metropolitan area. This month it's Phoenix. We will rent a hotel room, ballroom, on a Saturday. We invite anybody from about a 350-mile radius who is a relative of anybody who's still missing from any of our wars, uh, Vietnam, Korea, World War II, uh, First Desert Storm, anybody who is a relative of the missing. We want them to come in, and it's at the uh, Hilton Hotel out at the airport. We start at 8 in the morning with registration, and the sessions start at 9 o'clock, and we bring in representatives of our units from all over the world. We spend the day giving them a PowerPoint presentation on what we do and how we do it. Then at the end of the day, we give them a printout of whatever information we might have about their own particular missing loved one. We let them talk with a uh, with a uh, area expert, like if, let's say, they're missing from Vietnam, we'll let them talk one-on-one with a Southeast Asia analyst. And some of these people, Jack, this is the first time in in years, maybe even decades, that they've heard anything about their missing loved one. Hmm. Even if we're only able to give them a tiny bit of new information, if it helps them move a little closer to closure, it means so much to them, and they are so grateful. Of course, we always get recharged and revitalized and rededicated when we see how much it means to the family. I was just going to say, how do you feel at the end of the day after going through that? It must just do something for you just to... It does get a little bit emotional at times. I I would imagine it would. Now, this is going to be Saturday. This This Saturday. It's going to be Saturday. It's at uh, 8 o'clock. All right. Phoenix Airport Hilton. and uh, Pardon me, Hilton. Yes. yes, It's at Phoenix Airport Hilton, uh, from what I'm looking at here, starting at registration at 8 o'clock. Now, do most people know about this? What if somebody's just finding out now? Can they just come? Absolutely. If you are... this is just open to family members, but if you are a family member, and that doesn't, doesn't just mean father, mother, sister, brother, it means even a cousin mm-hmm. or a grandparent or a grandchild, do come in because we want you to know what, what the government is doing, how we're going. We have, we have over 100 people in Washington, 500 other people throughout the world who work full-time on just trying to account for America's missing. Quickly, tell us, uh, good morning, Vietnam. How did that uh, come about? That started when I was in Iraklian uh, Air Station on the island of Crete. Now, I had grown up in Pittsburgh, and the morning uh, drive was owned when I was a teenager by a fellow by the name of Reed Cordick on a program called Cordick and Company on KDKA. So that formed my idea mm-hmm. of what a good morning show should be. Well, when I took over the show in Crete, uh, it was Good Morning Iraklian, a very mild, calm, matter-of-fact, Good Morning Iraklian. <laughs> but as the program developed and got wilder and wilder, the Good Morning Iraklian got wilder. Well, when I went to Vietnam, my first job was as news director, which is why I got involved in the whole business about news censorship. Then when the fellow who was doing the morning show left, I took it over. And Good Morning Iraklian became Good Morning Vietnam. When I left, the fellow who took over the morning show from me, an Army specialist by the name of uh, Kramer Hawes, he kept that same format and that same sign-on. It became a, uh, a tradition with each subsequent morning man until we left Vietnam. So a lot of times a man will say to me, Oh, I used to listen to you every morning. Really? When were you there? Oh, I was there in 6970. Well, see, I was there in 6566, as you just said, but right. they... 
they all they remember is hearing that good morning there. And I found out when I want to go out into the field to do interviews, <laughs> I found out that it was not unknown on a particularly bad day. I would yell, good morning, Vietnam. And some of the troops would yell the GI equivalent of, get stuffed, Cronauer. <laughs> and on one occasion I heard about a guy picked up his M16 and blew away his radio. You turn on the microphone and you say, That's the way we really did it. <laughs> this has been a test. This is only a test. <laughs>